Those are just starting to come into bloom. We had some delphinium tricorn that was here earlier. You can see it's nice, cool little seed pods. Over here we have some Brennera macrophylla, um, Alexander's grape that um, is just finishing blooming. It has beautiful flowers, but I grow it for the foliage. Um, the flowers are just a plus. Um, orchid frost, Lamium, Conoclo macro areola, regal red painted fern, or the may apples. These are really beautiful. I love the foliage and the flowers are cool too. And this one, ooh, we have a little apple. Here's a little may apple. Uh, we have geranium maculatum. Begonia grandis are beautiful ostrich ferns. They have grown amazingly and they're beautiful. There are trilliums back here. Um, oh, the trillium this color. Right back here, under, hidden behind this little fence from the hydrangea, we have our trillium disc color. That's blooming right now. That's beautiful. Um, this is a hydrangea arborescence called Incredible Blush. Yeah, I think Incredible Blush. This was from Mount Cuba Central. Um, we have our little pots. I'm in the middle of changing things up. This is Carex Lassicolmus Bunny Blue. And we have Ethereum, Forma Angustum, Rebellum, something like that. This is Lady in Red Fern. So I'm trying to do more native perennials in our containers because like over here, I have this Verbena Homestead Purple that will be going out in our front containers, which blooms for a great amount of time. And it's just a great, great plant in general. Very beautiful purple color. Over here, this I just planted today in the rain. This is Carex amphibola, creek sedge. Um, it, this area puddles very badly in our weather when it's rainy. So that's why I'm trying out this Carex amphibola. See how it does, it likes moist shade. So that's definitely moist. And there's Packer Ari as well, that's very small. And right here is Sanguinaria canadensis, bloodroot. Beautiful, you can see it's seed pods. An ephemeral, but ephemerals are very important in our landscapes. Back here we have the Lictrum uh, Thalactroides, Shof's Double Pink. It's very interesting. It's a ruin enemy, native, but it's this pink double form, which is very rare. And that's been blooming for a month, probably. We have some sedum, autumn joy, some tiarellas that um, just finishing blooming. Corridus, corridal, corridalis ludia, which is beautiful. They seed themselves around, not native, but not too bad. They're beautiful. They provide season from, color from now until fall. So great for shade. We have our sedum ternatum larinum park, which there's more over here that's a little bit older and has more blooms. This is a great native ground cover. Hookera obsidian, Hakanoclo macro areola. Um, Silophrum diphylum with its really interesting seed pods. Um, Celandine poppy. Oh, and you can see our May breeze, Flux of Arcata, starting to bloom too. And the funny thing about this plant, if you'll come over here, is I planted it right here and it's spreading out into the drier parts, which is funny because that part gets no rain, but it's going that way. So just thought that was interesting. And the last little addition is Solidago flexicolis, zigzag goldenrod, because we have to support um, late season bloomers. And back here, there's some Mertensia virginica, which is 
dormant, so that's why that's there. This is our latest project. This is the, um, I haven't really given this a name, it's just part of the shade gardens, but this is Carrick's Pennsylvanica and Appalachica. These are all mixed in here, and um, there's stuff planted. There's some Celandine poppies planted in between. There's some Mertensia virginica, Virginia bluebells. And there will be Facelia by Panatafida eventually. Same thing over here, Mertensia um, siloferum. And over here, I'm doing a little experiment. Right in this little nook of our tree, I planted some Mertensia. You can see it's a cute little leaf there. Um, so I'm going to see how that does in growing basically out of a tree. This is our peony garden, not much to see really. Just there, um, but it, nothing yet though. The clematis, this is also going to get changed. All of this, um, daylilies are going to get removed. All the peonies we're getting rid of. And we're going to move the peony bed out of the shade because they really don't do well here anymore. They need the nice um, sun to bloom the best. Um, Wisteria blue moon, which is growing up our trellis nicely. Um, Clematis, I don't know the name, but it's a purplish color and that's all budded beautifully. Okay, I think that's it. Um, now just the vegetable garden. Yeah, let's look at the Carex real quick. Let's pan over that. So we're gonna go back into the vegetable garden now. So you, so this is a little greenhouse that I'm doing. I'm starting a bunch of plants for our meadow, as I discussed earlier, so they're all under there. So we have this arugula that um, seeds itself in, really. You can see it's pretty much done blooming, but it has a bunch of seed pods on it. This definitely needs to be weeded in here, some of the beds especially. Um, we have some kale planted in there, onions. Scallions, carrots. Yep, the carrots are starting to come up. Um, over here we have leeks and there's cabbage in there, potatoes, garlic, um, beets, asparagus. These asparagus are super tall. They're actually taller than me now. We have our peas over here. This is Argan Sugar Pod 2. Um, radishes looking nice. These are, will be ready soon, actually. Um, there's more lettuce planted in that area. It's not up yet. More asparagus. It looks like my sister left a trowel out here. Um, she helps with the weeding sometimes. This is our strawberry bed. This is a variety called All Starts June Bearing. And this is just... Yeah, I guess it's just finished blooming. I can see a nice amount of strawberries we're gonna get this year. So that's exciting. We have two of those beds. We have our chives, which are just starting to bloom right there. And um, above that's the Stanley Plum, which has already bloomed. And you can see there's some plums on it. I'll have to start thinning that soon. And you can see under it, there's a lot of violets. I think I'm going to let the violets take over under the tree because, I mean, it's, it's a lot of weeding, but I'm going to remove most of it from the pathways. But I think under the tree, along with the garden flocks, it'll look good. We have Swiss chard from last year that overwintered nicely. Oh my gosh, look at this. See if I can break this off. This is a bright light, so it's like rainbow colored. We have this beautiful, like pinkish salmon. Then we have the yellowish 
color. There's white. Um, you can see this is going to bolt, but um, might as well use it while we have it. So I'll bring these in for our salads, but there's lettuce throughout there. Onions in here. Onions, potatoes, potatoes, peas. Uh, this is our raspberry. They've been giving away raspberry plants all year. Um, Cause, oh, she has more. I have to give away more. Cause they just sprout up everywhere and I hate to waste them. This is um, scallions. So this is their flower. So I just left it cause I wanted to see it. But yeah, really interesting. The um, raspberries are almost starting to, oh, nope, they're blooming. Yep, they're blooming. Oh wait, not these ones. Um, right here, here's the bloom. They're a little heavy from the rain. This is a hardy kiwi. We've still yet to get any hardy kiwis. Um, but it's a cool vine. It's fine. Hopefully we'll get fruit this year. Who knows? These are tomatoes, cages, and shakes. This will be occupied shortly. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, let's, let me take over here first. Let's go over here. Oh, the gooseberry. I want to show you the gooseberry. So I planted this gooseberry this year. It's called Pixwell, and you can see the little berries right here. They're almost like grapes, and they're really sour. I planted them for my sister because she likes sour fruits, so. I thought that she would enjoy these and it'll be fun to try a new fruit. Um, let's, let's take a walk down back to where we started and then I think we'll have a video there. So, um, yeah, I think, well, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you. Have a good Bye.